Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Kavi Pasta, and before we get started on tonight's story, I'm gonna let you know about tonight's author, which you all know already. I'm almost certain you all know tonight's author. Jack Townsend is the author of Tales from the Gas Station, and Tales from the Gas Station's volume one through four, as well as Bedside Manor, are available now on Amazon. And before anyone asks in the comments, yes, I have gotten back to work on the audiobook for volume four after my incredibly long time of health issues and life issues and everything like that, but I'm getting up. I'm catching up, I'm doing all that stuff, and it will be out soon, TM. And now, on to tonight's story. March 31st, 11.45 p.m. You may have already heard about the shitty gas station at the edge of town. It's garnered quite a bit of infamy over the past few years. But if you haven't yet been introduced, allow me to summarize. Weird things tend to happen there. Some of it can be explained away. Natural weather phenomenons, fumes from the local chemical plant playing tricks on the mind, bored townies burdened with too much time, alcohol, and drugs. Some other things, though, simply defy explanation. Perhaps the frequency of incidents has something to do with the fact that the business is always open. Barring a few incidents where the building needed to close its doors for foundational repairs after the odd earthquake, sinkhole, or shootout. The business is otherwise operational 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and every day of the year. That includes holidays, uh, yes, even the minor ones, even though, as one employee continuously argues, it sure would be nice to take a day off every April 1st. There's enough shenanigans to worry about without a whole day dedicated to the manufacturing of new ones. Not that it was ever expected to be effective, but there is a sign taped to the wall behind the cash register that very clearly states, no pranks allowed. It goes up every March 31st and stays up, usually, until someone removes it, steals it, or, in one case, sets it on fire. If you couldn't already guess, April Fool's Day is my least favorite holiday. If I didn't have a job to do, I'd be far away from the people, drowning my post-traumatic stress with something strong enough to kill the memories for at least another year. But duty calls, so here I am, sitting behind the cash register at the gas station and waiting to see what nonsense today has in store. At least I've got this journal to keep me occupied. April 1st, 12.20 a.m. Well, that didn't take long. Here it is, barely scratching the surface of our annual day of mischief, and things have already gone stupid. It started just before midnight, with a customer wandering the store, wearing an outfit made entirely of cardboard boxes and packing tape. To be honest, it was a decently impressive example of riddle and abuse ingenuity. Riddle ingenuity? The arms and legs were made from the long, skinny packages used to mail posters. The chest and feet were a bit more square, giving him a poor Voltron vibe. His helmet was pulled up on his head like a hat, not sure if it was just a courtesy to show his face or if the eye holes weren't big enough for him to see what he was shopping for, or maybe he just really wanted to share his COVID with me. He was open mouth wet coughing all over the aisles, after all. Eventually, he found what he was looking for, a bottle of bleach, and brought it up to the counter. While I waited for his card to run, the man calmly opened the bottle and took a sip right in front of me. As I handed him his receipt, he squinted at my name tag and said, Thank you, Jack. Uh, can I ask you a question? I'd simply love it if you didn't, I responded. Would you, off the top of your head, know how much postage it would take to mail a package to the White House, like, say, 200 pounds, give or take? That'd be a question for somebody else. I was feeling less than inclined to be helpful, especially because, according to my watch, it was only 11.59 p.m., which meant this guy was not pulling an early April Fool's prank. He was just the normal, everyday kind of crazy. That's when the clock struck 12, and everything changed. The lights flickered off. The sound of dull chimes filled the room one after the other. The front door slammed open, and a deep fog rolled in. The crazy box man sipped his bleach and stared out at the darkness until the chiming came to a stop. A dozen chimes in total. And then he walked into the store, dragging long chains behind him, arms stretched out as he moaned like a zombie that had just stubbed its toe. Damn it, Jerry, I yelled. We had a truce. No more April Fool's Day pranks. Who's this clown? asked Boxman. That's Jerry, I explained, my roommate. 
It really says a lot when you're able to make the bleach-drinking madman raise an eyebrow and call you a clown. But if anyone can make such an impression, it's Jerry. Oh, he moaned as he shuffled towards us, stopping momentarily to pick up his chains and rattle them in the air. You're really coming to the bit this year, aren't you? At this point, Boxman excused himself and scooted out the door into the soupy cloud of fog. I am not the one they call Jerry. More chain rattling for emphasis. All right, fine, I'll bite, I said. Who are you then? I am the great Hakshu, god of mischief. Hakshu, Kazuntite. Jerry, I said as I rubbed my eyes. You told me you couldn't work today because you tested positive for COVID, which means that you either lied in order to put together this elaborate ruse after I specifically asked you not to, or you were telling the truth and you just exposed me to your cooties. Either way, I'm pissed. Not Jerry Hakshu. The great Hakshu, he corrected, suddenly losing his spooky accent. Please don't forget my title. Go home, I said, before I kick your ass. A frown crept across his face. Who are you? He asked. I came for the one they call Jack. You are not him. I lost the thread here. What's the joke even supposed to be? Are you like a ghost or something? Where did that fog come from? Is that stuff safe to breathe? Where's Jack? He asked, dropping his chains and crossing his arms stubbornly. Are you serious right now? I asked. I mean, I honestly can't tell if you're joking or not. We've known each other for how many years? He shook his head. We've never met. Because you're not Jerry, right? You're the ghost Hakshu, god of mischief. That's correct. I decided it was time to play along. Okay, your majesty. If you are the god of mischief, then why do you look like my roommate? I am only allowed to speak to Jack. I am Jack, I shouted, maybe a bit too loudly. Oh, really? He took a pair of glasses out of his front pants pocket and put them on his face. With a judgmental look, he let it along, hmm, then added after a pregnant pause. You don't look anything like I was expecting. Thought you'd be taller. Well, I am sitting down. Do you have any identification? That depends. Do you have a god of mischief warrant? I suddenly realized how silly it was to even try and defend myself. Now hang on a second. If you are the god of mischief, a god of mischief, not the god of mischief, little g. Oh, mischievous and humble? Not a common combination. Okay. So if you are a god of mischief, then why do you look like my roommate? I come to you in a form that you can more comfortably comprehend. This visage of a ghost is meant to remind you of your own pending mortality. But Jerry isn't dead. I mean, he had to be resuscitated one time after nearly drowning in a koi pond, but I don't know if that counts. I'll be perfectly honest with you, Jack. There weren't that many good options. We looked at all the possible dead people from your past, and apparently almost all of them tried to, like, kill you at some point. We spirits try not to take the form of someone that would send you running for the hills. So were you a spirit or a god? Don't overthink it. Okay. Let's say I believe you. Why are you visiting me? It's come to our attention that you do not understand the true importance of the season. You've lost your way. I need to be reminded why this holiday matters. How did it come to your attention? We saw it on your blog. He gestured at the laptop open on my counter. Believe it or not, most of the deities in the cosmic finite singularity are followers of your blog. Really? Yeah. We think that shit's hilarious. Thanks? He raised his hands dramatically. A bolt of lightning cracked loudly outside the building. Thunder reverberated around the room as he screamed in an inhuman voice, Enough philosophizing! At this point, much to my surprise, he began floating into the air, the chains around him hovering like tentacles behind his body, and his eyes turned pale white. Jack, hear my words! Okay. Tonight, you shall be visited by three spirits. Three spirits including you? What? No! Three additional spirits. Come on, think about it. I said shall be. If I were included, I would have said shall have been. That's... There's no way that's correct. Shut up. Okay, sorry. When the clock strikes one, another. When the clock strikes two, and a third. At the stroke of three, I ventured. No, four. Of course three. 
Electricity crackled from the tip of his fingers as he extended his left hand and pointed at my face. You have been warned. Now look to me no longer. I must wander. He glided through the air towards the open door, but then his hovering chains got caught on the sides of the frame. I waited as he finagled the ghostly appendages through the doorway one at a time, carefully but awkwardly, and when he finally got all the way through, he let out a victorious laugh and floated away to the foggy night. The door slammed shut, and that's when I began this journal entry. It's not another range of possibility for Jerry to have orchestrated such an elaborate plan, but uh, you got a good feeling I'm in for some stranger things to come before the night is over. To be continued, I guess. Hey there, kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I want to tell you thanks so much for watching tonight's video or listening to tonight's episode of the podcast if you happen to be listening to this as a podcast or as a YouTube or however else you managed to have found this story for tonight. And as always, I would love to give a big thank you to everyone who's supporting me over on Patreon. You guys are the real MVPs. You guys keep things going, especially while things have been nuts for me over the past couple of months. And things have been getting crazier and crazier as time goes on. You guys are the ones who are keeping me sane. And I mean that with all sincerity, that you guys have helped me immensely. <laughs> so, in my personal life and my professional life, I want to give a very big thank you to... Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Jacob Fensky, Chance Burnett, Diana Krauss, Lakeda Canizales, Mr. B. Foster, Pepper Squeezer, Travis, Joseph Calarudo, Rudy B, Dante Kincaid, Foxhound 803, Mephistopheles, Curse Pox Priorc, Bastion Beefcake, Jeff Joey's Cultist, Love You M&M, M, Insanity Gamer X, Jesus Corneo, Yargul, Amber Clark, Jay Kearns, Himbo Jerry, Sam Ahai, Crusader Chocobo, Adam Marius, Captain Scurvy, Escabine, Raiden Morris, Nate Cull, Our Min Sec Time, Angelus, Seclude, That Creepy Chick, Red Shadow Cat, Xavier and Cheyenne, Six Gay Rats in a Trench Coat, Turtle Man, Cryolinian, Lord Life's Best, Goring Tri Magazine, Mr. Marcus Blitz, Michael Inchok, Dirt Diver 030, Matt Bach, Voice of Sam, Kelly J, Michael, The Leader Count, Melted Lake, Holly Sue, William King, Sashi Sasaku, Stricken, Freddy Krueger, Happy Birthday Jason Wilson, Lisa Cottrell, Caspian, Hades Nephew, Theater Chip, Acid System. Mog, Kiwi the Sloth, Bester Lampshade, Nico Kaya, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Paulson, and Corey Kenshin. To everyone on this list, everyone in the description, and of course anyone who could support even just one dollar, thank you all so much for making my life significantly easier with this. And if you guys would like to be able to join any of the names that you see here, or down there, or anything at all, head over to patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta. And with that, I wish you all a very, very pleasant night, and sweet dreams.